All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of a video. Uh, I finally got my third function valve put on my tractor. I was able to put my new pinnacle grapple. Uh, the one I got was from Homestead Implements. This is a uh, 50 inch, uh, excuse me, 60 inch wide grapple. Uh, but my tractor, again, this whole process has been uh, really interesting to, to get everything done. My, my, original, my tractor had original pin on bucket, but I bought the uh, quick attach skid steer element from uh, skidsteers.com. It's a ATI Corporation brand. There's the model and serial number on it. This is for a 463, LA 463 loader on the L3400 tractor. It's a 2007 model, but I got the uh, valve hooked up. I had to make some modifications. I'm going to try to walk you through a little bit of this, but I'm going to run it first. I got the new handle put on, and this is the control now because the third function valve that when I push this button, you can watch the grapple work. So that gives it the third function. So now I can put hydraulics on the front of my tractor. I got hydraulics on the front of my tractor for simple functions like this. So that shows you how it works. But then when I don't do that, I got my normal lift and tilt functions. So you can see that. But I want to walk you through a few things. I'm going to turn this tractor off so you can kind of hear about it. Just a few of my thoughts on installing this third function valve from Summit uh, Hydraulics. Let me turn this off. Okay, I did order the kit from Summit Hydraulics. I, I, I like the kit. Uh, I thought the instructions were fair. Uh, I think there's probably a few things that could maybe be improved on the instructions, but I'm, I'm going to assume they figure that if you're putting this on yourself, you've got a little bit of a, a mechanical ability, and, and that is my background. Um, so it wasn't brain surgery. It just took a little time. The third function valve comes with this bracket you can see right here. And this bolts up, but this is not the way the picture shows it in the book because um, it shows it actually mounting behind in the instructions, but this has to mount right here. Uh, it comes with the hoses. Some of the hoses are, are, you can see there's a little bit extra length. I got some extra length with those hoses. Really no place to put it, so I just let it run up there. And also this one hose down here has a little extra length. Um, it would be nice if that was just, but, but because I know they're doing this for multiple tractors, I understand they can't get every hose to be just exact, but uh, in the future, it may be that I want to shorten this one particular hose because it really just runs right up here. It just should run right from there there, so it could be a lot shorter. And I may, at some point, get a hose made up for it that is shorter for that. Uh, putting the, pulling the knob off, putting uh, the controller on is pretty easy. I just cable, I just put zip ties and some tape. Uh, this tractor does stay in the barn, so it's not out in the weather when I'm uh, not using it. Uh, it had some extra cord and stuff. I just kind of um, taped it up here to the hoses. Maybe not the prettiest thing, but it's working. That can all be shortened up, obviously, and made to look a lot neater. It all does come with the protective plugs and caps, but this is going to stay on here. I don't ever plan on taking it off. I, I've never taken the loader off since I bought the tractor in 2008. I've never had the loader off. So, hoses, it goes down here to this bracket. And I'll show you this bracket right here. Now this bracket is normally black. I just painted this so it's really pretty fresh. It's supposed to be a bolt-on, but it does not. Uh, it doesn't fit anywhere. It's supposed to fit, it probably fits another tractor. But what I did, I just took it off and ground my paint away and welded it. And I'm gonna go back probably tomorrow, put another coat of paint on this, because. It's a 24-hour dry time on this paint from the TSC. But the bracket's fine. I'm probably also, because there's a pretty close tolerance between this, let's see if I can show you, I'm trying to look at this hose and my bumper. There's a pretty close tolerance right, that, right in there. I'm trying to show it right in through there. So I'm probably going to take this hole in this plate, and once this paint's dry, I'm going to disconnect this. I'm going to take my die grinder and shift that over probably at least a half of an inch. Um, to get this away from my bumper because it, it is within a quarter of an inch of that and I don't like it. 
So that's the only thing. But that, you know, I couldn't, it didn't bolt on, but it's okay. I just welded it on. It's no big deal. Plate's pretty, plenty substantial. Uh, and then the hoses right from the, um, that came with the uh, pinnacle uh, grapple. Just go right there, the pinnacle grapple. I, I'm pretty impressed with the, uh, it's A450 or I think on this steel. So it's got pretty tough steel in it. Uh, it was, but it was, there was two brands I was looking at and this one basically could get it to me quicker. So I went with this brand and hopefully it's going to hold up well. I'll let you know. I'm the only person going to be running it unless one of my sons runs it some, but uh, mainly it's just for me picking up. I got a lot of brush to clean up and things like that. So that's the hookup for the pinnacle grapple. And I'm excited to have it on the tractor. I am going to add some more weight to the back of this tractor. And I'm also going to buy some spacers from, I think it's Bora. And I'm going to space my wheels out uh, five inches on each side, which is going to put my width of tires right at six feet, which is going to, that box blade six feet. So I'm going to space these wheels out another five inches on each side. And I'll probably, if, if I'll see how it does. Eventually, I may space the front ones out too. But right now, for sure, I know I want to have the rear wheels spaced out. I've got some hills out here, and I'm really careful. I don't go crazy on hills. But you see, Kubota Thel 3400 is pretty narrow. And I already have them. I already have the wheels spaced out. These wheels do come with a reversible. You see the, the uh, mounting brackets in there. You can reverse these and turn them in. But I've got them set to the furthest out position. So I'm going to put some spacers on there uh, to re uh, remedy that. And yeah, I always run it like this, but now that I got this grapple, I want a little bit more stability. But uh, from the seat, you can see how the lever does. Like I said, it's just got two push buttons. Um, I've been, like I said, really happy with it. Um, again, if it's, I, I, set the, I set the grip, it's pretty comfortable. And you just got the two buttons right there. So when you start it up, you can just normally raise. You can normally tilt. Then, if you want to grab something, I may refer. I think I like. See, that's open and this is closed. So I'm, I'm depending on if I get comfortable with where these buttons are. All I have to do is uh, unplug and plug those uh, wires into the control valve. I just need to swap them if I want to reverse these two buttons. So it's no big deal. So that's open and that's a close. So I, I may. I'll probably just keep it like that. Um, but it's on there good. I think it's going to be a, a great tool to have. And, yeah, excited with the project. Uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, post them. I'll try to uh, look at it and see if I can get answers. As far as routing the hoses that go, uh, one thing I didn't show you, um, one thing with routing the hoses, that the ones that go uh, from here to the front, you can just see they're just cable tied, zip tied up to there. Uh, not my favorite way of doing it. I, I, I'd considered making a bracket to go on top of that bracket, making a dual level bracket and putting some padding in there and maybe getting those hoses in there. And I, I still may do that. Uh, that'd be nice. But right now I just tied them over to the existing